I can't take a good picture here. I'm taller than all of them. Grace, how are you, Grace? Did you go to? Did you go? No, no, don't mind. Mom rested. Mom rested. Exactly. Eighty-one. Yeah, she has good. She has lived her life. I'm coming. No problem. On Tuesday. No, Tuesday, you come at 2. <laughs> yes. Of course, maybe Council Minister and condolences. Thank you. Can you meet it? Yes, uh, Honorable. Uh, Looks like uh, the activities are back to normal in the Netball Federation. I mean, uh, with the, what is going on administratively, you have a team leaving up a series of activities in the United uh, Kingdom. As government, is this probably a step in the right direction? Well, it's in line with the law which were approved and which the president assented to. It is true that the provisions of that law gives uh, us as government to work with the normalization committee and what we are doing. We want to thank, I want to specifically to thank the outgoing executive of the Uganda Network Federation because General Bekwas was able to hand over the entire office to the normalization committee and as government now the money, the funding of the federation straight away goes to the, to the normalization committee and no wonder you see that the normalization committee has already prepared a team for an international competition which is in one which helps them in terms of seeding so for that matter and of course they also had to sign the MOUs specifically with Netball England and Net Wales for this specific competition as government we have supported them in terms of the little allowances which they are going to be paid because according to the MOUs they signed there were obligations which the host nations were going to take into and for that matter technically I tried to sit down with my technical people they advised me we could not be able to pay them beyond what was provided for because that would raise audit queries. But I want to thank my minister, senior minister, and the entire team of National Council of Sports and the netball players themselves. We want to reiterate netball is our priority sport and we will do whatever it takes to make it remain as a priority game, both internationally, nationally, regionally, and at this, at this school competition. Well, priority sport, but uh, as per the KPIs, are they on schedule or behind schedule, the normalization committee? The normalization committee, to be honest, is on schedule. But I want to say, you know, the formation or the challenges which came up in the Netball Federation were not unseen, nor were they for a scene. So for that matter, they have a challenge in terms of how to continue with the operations. And this is one thing I picked this morning. I'm going to write to my senior minister and we look at how we must support them as government to continue with the operation. And that means that we might need to ask for additional resource because according to the budget which the Uganda Netball Federation had, they did not have a provision of some of the activities which the Nobilization Committee is meant to undertake. So for that matter, we will have to come up with a strategy on how to support them to immediately work within the timeline 
they were given because there was a timeline of six months to make sure that we have a fully elected federation, which federation, when those governance issues are addressed, they will write to us for their names and we register the federation again. We will be able to give them now a certificate under the new sports law. Honorable, you keep on uh, emphasizing that uh, the athlete is always a priority in the uh, sports sector. But so many people argue that uh, it has uh, not been the case. There are so many case studies that are out there. You have um, a netball here, of course, uh, in the situation that they are in among us other uh, federations. How long will it take uh, for this um, uh, gospel uh, to be practiced uh, by uh, the different uh, stakeholders, especially administrators? First, you must know that the sport in Uganda is run by the federations and associations, if you look at the new sports law. As government, we come in to work with those federations to support. So the main focus of my message goes to those federations, that whatever they do, the priority person for us is athlete. Because like now, say, I want to give example of FUFA. What a footballer earns when he goes to play football at a national level is different from what a netballer earns. For me, we in government. I want to see that we must begin to almost match. Yes, I know football is different from netball, but as long as it's a representation of our country, Uganda, my role as government is to make sure that the athletes who represent the country, who carry the flag of the country, are fully facilitated at a level where he or she appreciates to carry that flag, fight for that flag, for the country. And that's why I keep on emphasizing our priority is the athlete, and it still remains the athletes. Like now the incoming international competition, my priority is to make sure that the budget coming in, priority number one, goes to facilitate the athlete. Training and preparation is a core. And that's why you see for the first time, this netball has got 10 million from government for a World Cup, which has never been the case. And that is the main purpose for me now, that going forward, there's what we call East African Community Games. There's what we call a Commonwealth Games, Olympic Games coming, all African Games. My purpose and focus is how do I empower an athlete to get money, which in the, at the end of the day, he comes back and does something for himself, for his family, and for the rest of his children if he has something down there. Number two, the new law now also talks of rewards. Are you getting me? There's a provision for rewards as government. Now we are coming up with the regulations and the SI to help us implement that specific provision. This morning, I was discussing with the Attorney General. We are constituting a team immediately to embark on coming up with the regulations and the SI is a statutory instrument for me as a minister to, read, to see how to continue with the operation of the New Sports Act. I think oh, no, well, lastly, lastly from, from, from me, uh, mm. you hinted on uh, very soon Uganda will be inviting countries to come here uh, because of uh, the construction that are probably supposed to be happening. An update on uh, when uh, probably work will fully uh, start on uh, having the complex in Uganda. First of all, I am um, some time back when I talked, you the media people joked. You made fun of me. Now I want to reiterate and to reconfirm to you where we are standing, this ground is already, this facility has already been given to one company called Suma. Suma is a Turkish company reputable for the construction of sports facilities across the world. We are going to construct an Indo arena, 15,000 state of the art here where we are. In that arena we shall have a hotel. 120 rooms. In that arena, we shall have a hostel, which is equivalent to 60 rooms. In that arena, we shall have a mini arena of about 3,000 seater. We shall have a same Olympic swimming pool. We shall have a hockey pitch here. So for that matter, what I am aware of, which meeting is meant to take place before the end of this month, is now to conclude on the financing of the project. But as far as identification of the company, it's done. And as far as this project scope is done. So friends, very soon we will officially unveil for you what is going to be called Kampala Arena. It's no longer a Lugugu Arena. So friends, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud that I'm a minister in the sector for seeing this big, big investment project which is going to be here. So I have heard there are other people who are running up and down claiming they have ownership of this land. Please don't waste your energy. This land belongs to government, and we are going to put up a government project here, which is going to help the country in terms of bringing in more money to support 
sports in this country. Look at, we are putting money to go to England. We will want to host Netball World Cup here. We will want to host NBA. We will want to host bigger indoor games here in Munyonyo. So friends, we are talking. Secondly, talk about Nambole. Some of you have mocked me, mocked me. Finally, I only send one picture in, a, in Twitter. It's becoming an X. It becomes viral. I am planning now to take you, the media, to go and see a refurbished Nambole. Because now, no, I'm not planning since <laughs> last year. I am now going to take you, and I'm going to give you that date. So, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. I am on 22nd of this month, I am taking a contractor to Hoima for the construction of the new set of the art stadium for AFCON. Some of you have been thinking, what is not happening? The president did tell you, we have two. He has directed me on the third. So what are you waiting for? Very soon we shall also commission the training pitches for AFCON. So ladies and gentlemen, the infrastructure plan is in place and we are on course. I thank you. Actually, let me say about sponsorships. First of all, I want to call upon all the companies which had signed the contracts for sponsorship with the netball then that please, the earlier you reach the normalization committee, the better. Because of our knowledge and ability, is a normalization committee which has mandate to handle sport netball now in the country. For that matter, look for Mr. Geoffrey Mwase. He's the chairperson of the normalization committee and is the one with the mandate by world netball, not government, <laughs> by world netball, to undertake activities of netball in Uganda as of now. I thank you.